Hello, my name is Andrew Kuhn. I have the honor of serving the Shalbina Methodist Church. And one of the things that this church has been uh, getting involved with uh, over the last couple of months is uh, meeting the needs of, figuring out some ways to meet the needs of people in our community who are intellectually and developmentally disabled. This is something that came to my attention uh, this last year as uh, Charlisa, uh, who we're going to hear from in just a moment, came to me. Uh, she was struggling with some of the needs involved with taking care of her son, a second uh, grader named uh, Anson. And it, it was the last sort of thing to get my attention uh, after just looking around and realizing how many people we have in this church who are directly connected to uh, serving people with uh, special needs. And it became clear uh, after chatting with Charlisa that that was something where uh, we need to get to get involved somehow. So we gathered together uh, some people in the, from across the community who agreed that this is something we needed to be uh, that wanted to be part of this. Uh, and so we identified uh, pretty quickly that the, the three most pressing needs, the three things that could be done uh, to help in our community were first to get uh, the monthly caregiver meetings, the monthly provider meetings up and running, and we're, that's in the process of happening right now, that those who serve, uh, the or organizations that serve such folk are, are going to be gathering uh, monthly, uh, starting actually tomorrow. I, I'm recording this on Monday, Thursday, the Thursday before Easter, and tomorrow, the Friday before Easter, will be their first gathering. Uh, second, that we wanted to do some education to help people in our community know more about the people around them because uh, that's one thing about people who are intellectually and developmentally disabled is that it's really easy to to miss them and so that's what this video is that's why this is a video of a presentation that charlisa gave to some people in our community and then uh, the third task the third thing that we could do is to start talk about uh, how to provide respite care and Charlisa will uh, explain some of why that might be needed. And then after she says her piece, I'll come back and say a few words about how you and the organization you're connected to might be able to uh, assist. So thank you for your time. And here's Charlisa. Hi, guys. I'm Charlisa Markson. A lot of you know me. This is my son, Bean, and my son, Axton. We're here to talk about Bean, who is the little guy. Um, Axton is his 17-year-old brother and their best friends. Uh, Anson is eight years old. He's in the South Shelby Elementary School. Um, he lives at home with myself and his dad, his bro and he has two brothers. He has a brother that's six months younger than him, and he has a 17-year-old brother. He loves car rides. He loves Aladdin. He loves tickles and pillow fights. Um, his favorite color is orange, anything bright. Um, he likes red okay also, anything really bright in his face. He loves root beer. If you ever see him and you want to interact with him, root beer is the way. Uh, he loves goldfish crackers, but he does not like the ones with the powder because they taste weird. He loves anything sweet and he will tell you to roll over in order to get it. Um, the story behind that is in speech therapy they were singing a song and it's five in the bed and the little one said roll over. Well he finally said roll over. When he did that, I took him around to all the teachers and they had him do it for each teacher and each teacher gave him a Tootsie Roll. So now he thinks that that's how he gets what he wants is by telling you to roll over. He was diagnosed at 15 months old with Autism Spectrum Disorder or ASD. He's considered severe nonverbal, which means that he has very minimal vocabulary and what he does have you have to pretty well know what you're listening for. Um, he was given the diagnosis of ADHD or Attention Deficit hyper Hyperactivity Disorder. He was also given Global Developmental Delay. He has a genetic chromosome disorder that caused, it, it is the cause of this list of diagnoses. Once he turned five years old, they switched the global developmental delay to intellectual and developmental disability. It is just an age thing, and IDD is more inclusive, um, so you could throw several different uh, developmental or intellectual disabilities in underneath that. Um, it usually runs with Down syndrome and all of those. Uh, 
Um, autism spectrum disorder is defined as a developmental disability caused by the differences in the brain. Uh, it's a spectrum disorder. So we're just gonna go over some of the things here, but just understand that is not an all-inclusive definition. Uh, there is, there's way too much to stand here unless we'd be here all day. Um, so some of the symptoms are problems with social communication and interaction. Uh, he doesn't really care for people much. He especially doesn't care for other children that much. Um, not that he is mean to them or, or aggressive towards them. He just avoids them at all costs. Usually adults are his go-to people or teenagers. He likes teenagers. Uh, restricted or repetitive behaviors. So what we call that in my world is stimming. So that means uh, the flapping of the arms, you see that a lot, jumping up and down. His, a lot of times, are vocal, so he will repeat the same noise over and over again just to hear it bounce back to him because he likes the sound of it. So it's a stimming behavior. Uh, some of those are really hard to stop him from doing. It's, an, it's a compulsion that he can't help. Uh, trouble with motor skills, such as running, jumping, or riding. In Anson's case, his gross motor skills, such as running and jumping, are impeccable. He's like a cat. His ag agility is unbelievable. However, getting a pencil in his hand and getting him to write something down, um, nearly impossible. He has trouble with that pincer grasp. So those fine motor skills are a problem. And in some kids, you'll see they have an all-around issue or they have one or the other. Um, it just depends on the kid. Um, difficulties in learning and understanding. So learning, he's behind in every subject except for Anson Bean. He's the only subject that matters to him. Um, it's the only thing he really has interest in. Understanding things, and this is the easiest way that I can explain this, is he doesn't understand cause and effect or consequences. Um, so th the easiest way to explain that to you is if he throws a rock and the window breaks, and then I discipline him for breaking the window. He doesn't understand why I'm disciplining him. He didn't break the window, the rock did. What I mean by that is he doesn't make the connection from him to the rock to the window to his discipline. Those things are not connected to him. He just knows that that rock broke that window and why am I yelling at him? He does not understand cause and effect and consequences. He doesn't understand danger. He doesn't understand safety in any way. Um, there are major issues in his life. It's not understanding those. Difficulty in language, um, such as using it or understanding it. So he hears the words you're saying. For the most part, he knows what you're saying. He understands the words that you're feeding to him. Does he understand the connection of those words? Not always. So if I was to tell him, if you do that again, I'm going to put you in timeout. He understands if he does that again, but why would I put him in time out? Like, he doesn't make that connection from one thing to the other. Uh, again, not all inclusive. This is just some of the, these are just some of the basic struggles that these kids have every day. ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. You're going to see that these two lists kind of go hand in hand. Uh, most of the time, they are a dual diagnosis together. Um, and they have a lot of the same things on the list. So impulsive, low impulse control, impulsivity, it's a major issue. <laughs> like the stimming, he cannot stop himself. Uh, if he feels like he needs to jump, he's going to jump. He doesn't care where we're at. He doesn't care if the floor falls through. If he has to do it, he's gonna do it. Moving around, he does not stop moving day in and day out. When other kids say their kids bounce off the walls, they've never met Anson Bean because he literally bounces off the walls. Um, difficulties in learning, again, it's that Anson isn't interested, so Anson's not going to do it. Um, he will do a lot of things to get out of writing. He hates writing. Um, he doesn't like music class, which is weird because he likes music on car rides, he loves it. I think it's because at his age, the kids do not sing on key, I think maybe is the issue. Um, but he doesn't like music for that reason. Uh, 
understanding, and that is in learning and in social environments, he doesn't understand why you're crying. He has learned that if someone is crying that they need to be loved, but he doesn't understand why they're crying. Uh, even if it's right in front of his face, he doesn't understand. Again, with ADHD, that cause and effect, it just doesn't, it doesn't, he doesn't grasp that. His brain just doesn't understand it. Uh, obsessiveness. Lately, we've had a big problem with him walking by a crack on the ground, and he has to turn around and go touch it. Uh, the other new thing is he wants to touch toes. Your toes, not his toes. Somebody's toes. And it's very awkward, but it's an impulse, and he can't stop it. Uh, with these, both of these, anxiety and depression can come. Uh, with Anson, it's more anxiety. He doesn't like to come into new places. He doesn't like to do new things. He likes to know what's going to happen. He needs to know what would happen. We live on a very rigid schedule at our house because that's the best thing for Anson. Um, global developmental delay, it is a significant delay in two or more domains of development. That could be in daily living, motor, cognitive, speech, language, personal or social skills. Uh, that is the diagnosis they give under five years old. Once they've become five years old, they typically switch it to the IDD. Uh, and again, we're looking at the same, many of the th same things on this list. Behind in learning, motor skills, cognitive skills. Uh, may not be able to, to speak, speak or understand language as much as their peers and may not have playmates. Again, he's not a very interactive child. Intellectual developmental disabilities. Now this, this word is the word that we have used in the community to replace the R word, which is a very outdated and derogatory term because we've made it that way. Um, but we don't use that word because it was used so much in bullying and it became, when we said it, we were saying it to put someone down, and that's not what we want to do. So IDD is the new term for what they used to call mental retardation. We just don't use that word anymore. This is the new term. Uh, it's kind of a blanket term. So this could be used for someone who has a physical uh, disability, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, ASD, ADHD. There are a lot that could fall under this. If they are, uh, if a person is on any of those diagnoses, they could be considered IDD. Uh, it's definitely relative to the individual because it's just that global term. Um, it could be caused from genetic or environmental factors. So in Anson's case, he was born with a genetic disorder. Uh, we know where it came from. There are many studies out there that have, have taught us where that came from. Uh, we know it came from both sides of, for him. Uh, his brother has the same genetic disorder and his brother is above and beyond his peers and Anson's behind all of his peers. So it's kind of one of those things that you don't know which way they're gonna go. Um, Axton, my older child got a little luckier and he is able to learn at a rapid pace uh, till, until the point that he's typically bored, once he gets into something. So some of our local services that help with this, learning opportunities and quality works. So they provide targeted case management for individuals with IDD. The targeted case management is intended to provide support, offer advocacy, create connections in order to help the individual achieve their good life. So by that, they mean that what does that person want? Not do what do I want for that person, but what does that person want? Because that is their good life. What is going to make them comfortable in life and let's help them get there. So these numbers are astonishing to me. Uh, they serve several counties, LOQW does. Uh, they, they serve approximately 500 individuals, but 62 of them live in Shelby County. And most of those, that number are adults. We don't typically see the younger kids using 
utilizing this uh, service? We do. We work with uh, County Connections and have since Anson was three years old. So that he started in this uh, in this service at three, and he can go until he's passed on. They will help him through his entire life. They will give me support. They will give him support. That's what they're there for. Uh, what I really think is awesome is here in Shelby County, 100% of these individuals live with family or independently. They do not live in a Department of Health funded home. That is a huge, it speaks volumes to the kind of people we have in our county. But we do have some individuals that they do not have family here. They're adults, they live on their own, and the only people they have are their case managers. So those people need our help just as much. 22% of Shelby County clients are receiving funded services. Whether that's grants or state money or state funded services, they're using something, 22% of them. Uh, I think the numbers should probably be a little higher. A lot of the individuals in our community probably do not understand all of the services that are available. And that's part of what this is about. Shelby County school districts are a huge help. So we have approximately, I wanna say this number is about a thousand or so individuals in the Shelby County School District. And that's South and North Shelby. I think we're about a thousand to 1100 between the two of them. A hundred students. We have a hundred students in those two school districts that require extra help. Between the two schools, we employ anywhere from 15 to 20 paraprofessionals. Throughout that time, a paraprofessional is someone that does one-on-one -on -one with a child in need. In Anson's case, he has to have someone with him at all times. He cannot be left alone. He cannot be required to sit in a classroom 100% of the time and sit still. So he has someone with him all the time. We have a few of those out here at South Shelby that are one-on-one, -on -one, and there's a few there in North Shelby that are one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the school districts offer a individualized education plan. So what that does is it helps, it gets the parents and the teachers and the administrators together as a team so that they can decide what is best for that child and what their goals are and how we reach them. So an IEP is done every year at the least, um, but IEPs can be, those meetings can happen anytime you want, anytime the parent wants to, or anytime the school wants to. Um, they're not just limited to that one time a year, and a lot of people think that they are. So just know that they, they can be used anytime. Uh, the school system is a great support for, for us. Uh, again, that IEP team, I know that I communicate with them outside of school hours and, and outside of school activities. We discuss a lot. Um, if there are any concerns with Hanson as far as health or behaviors, any of that, we, we speak a lot. Uh, and they're amazing people to help with Hanson. So, a bit about respite care. Respite care is the a service provided to help people with to have the time they need to take care of some of the tasks that they, they cannot bring their loved one, uh, the person struggling with ID and DD, uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities, uh, with them. And it might be as simple as grocery shopping or going to a doctor's appointment. This is something that uh, we're thinking about offering once a month. We're thinking that we'll need volunteers to be here for that. We do need to find someone who will uh, take point on doing the paperwork. It's not going to be a lot of paperwork, but there will be some paperwork. Every person who's going to show up and receive uh, respite care, we're going to have to make sure we sit down with them ahead of time and, and understand what their needs are. Uh, and this is a way for us to love our neighbors. One of the great commandments, love God and love your neighbor. And we believe this is something that we need. And so uh, if you have learned something from this video, that has accomplished one of our tasks and we appreciate your time and if you are interested in being part of the effort to get respite care up and running in shelby county please let me know have a good day